Hello and welcome to Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name is Jim Rugg. I'm Ed Piskor. Going to look at the stupidest image comic of all time today. Before we do that, I want to invite all of you to like, follow, and subscribe to the Cartoonist Kayfabe YouTube channel if you haven't done so already. Hit that bell icon to be notified when a new video is posted. It'll give you a leg up on the Kayfabe effect. Like if you want to add the stupidest image comic to your collection, uh, you want to be the first one in line on eBay or at your local comic shop looking for this because sometimes they disappear and sometimes they go up in value throughout the day. So get in line first. Also, let these videos play through to the end. That allows YouTube's algorithm to share our videos with other comics fans who haven't found Cartoonist Kayfabe yet. It is how we grow the channel and we appreciate your help spreading the good word of Cartoonist Kayfabe. But we are here today to talk stupid. Yes. Hillary Barta's 1993 uh, one-shot from Image Comics. So 1993, this is year one of Image Comics, yet, a, yet another title from that early launch. They wasted no time. Like, once Image took off, it was like everybody that could get a book together and had some in there, it seemed like, man, they were working to get some of that Image uh, spotlight on them. And Hillary Barta... Long history with Rob Liefeld, had inked some of his New Mutants work uh, a few years prior to this, um, goes on to do some work with Alan Moore in the uh, Tomorrow Stories line. So I think he, he honed his, uh, now that I think about it, I think he honed some of his more comedic chops. I think he did some Plastic Man uh, All right. at, at one point. A long, yeah, I mean, a long career for Hillary Barta. So I'm not sure exactly how this comic comes about, but uh, you can see from, from the cover, you know, kind of in line with uh, Splitting Image or some sort of a parody satire mad magazine take on at least on spawn you know kind of a spawn logo homage and clearly spawn on our cover here <laughs> yeah there you go <laughs> fun cartooning absolutely, absolutely. He's, he's 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 so strong uh as per the indicia published quarterly Yes. Now, I only have issue one I think in my collection. I think so, too. Also, if you look in the Indicia, it says inside back cover, copyright Mitch O'Connell, but uh, it's just an ad for Max, so Mitch did not get something in on time, and they didn't amend the Indicia. I would love to see a Mitch O'Connell image parody in, like drawing. Like, what, what could that possibly look like? Yeah, man. And if he had been working on it, it must have surfaced somewhere. So, uh, if you're, you know, put put that in the comments if you guys are aware of some Mitch O'Connell image uh, illustration from around the early 90s. And, you know, some, some names worth mentioning, probably Doug Rice, uh, Dynamo Joe cartoonist. Mm -hmm. I believe Hillary's based in Chicago, and I'm guessing maybe Doug Rice is also because he was doing Dynamo Joe for First Comics, which was based in Chicago. Story and art, Hillary Barta. Story and Fred, Doug Rice. Art is the name as a joke. It reminds me of, uh, did you ever hear... Uh, what do they call? What do they call an armless, legless guy on your porch? Matt. <laughs> what do they call terrible. an armless, legless guy <laughs> in a bathtub? Bob. <laughs> what do you call an armless, legless guy hanging on a wall? Art. <laughs> <laughs> well done. <laughs> All right, uh, Steve Olaf on color. Yes. So uh, if you're gonna do, you know, kind of a spawn parody at this time. That's a good person to have on your team. The letterer, Willie Schubert, can do a pretty good Orzakowski Gilberg. Yeah, that's that's uh, that's very true. And it's having those defined shapes that Orzakowski created in Spawn. The italic as well. Like, he's using the same tool to put down this, the same kind of marks. If it's not... If it's Yeah, it's definitely not uh, computer lettering at this point. I'm looking at some E's, and they're definitely different. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what a snapshot, like, time period... You know, Tony Libido, publisher. It's interesting to watch, like, the history of uh, Image and how these roles change over that first decade or so. A lot, right. a lot of people come through these offices. Ollie Optics, your uh, roster for that group. And Kiko uh, Liefeld's colorist of choice. Yes. Part of Ollie Optics back in 1993. So Hilary Barta's art style is I would say of of the uh, Wally Wood school of of comic book parody. Uh, you could see it even just down to these buildings. Like those are Wally like rooted, solid, well lit Wally Wood style buildings that you would see in comics like Super Duper Man. It is very well lit, and you get that nice lightning effect uh, highlighted by Steve Olaf. And I think that comes from a cartoonist that's doing real lighting. Totally, and and the design of like some of the characters mm -hmm. and sh is to it's full 
Wallywood energy, and that's such a cool application in like an image space. You know, it's a great evolution. You go from Bat Boy and Ruben and Super Duper Man to Spoon. <laughs> right. Or Spoon. Yes. A lot of energy in the cartooning. Uh, you can see right away, like, we're going after some of the spawnisms. This cape is just ludicrously big. But his drapery skills and the way he even lights it, there it never feels like there's one line out of place. Yeah, it's really tight cartooning. It, it, it is nice that Image was uh, open to this kind of stuff, too. These are nice artifacts, I think, from that time period. It became a cottage industry to, to parody the Image guys w right. with every other publisher. So why not get some actual Image, you know, published comics, some sanctioned Image comics? There's a long tradition, you know, like not brand X and, and shit like that. Yeah, I feel like I could pull, I mean, all the way back to Mad and, and you know, Super Duper Man and stuff of that nature. Sure, I'm just thinking specifically about about being the brand that owns the oh, parody. Right. Yeah, it makes sense. And you're right about there were so many of these things. I could probably pull out a dozen from my boxes of various image spoofs of this time. Maybe 20 of them. There's got to be at least 20 of them drawn by Bill Mouse himself. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you could do a dozen of just his. The buildings here are orchestrated like a to Todd McFarlane, like just on that grid, mm -hmm. you know, straight on like that. And, and like with these kind of things, he's definitely observant of the McFarlane stuff, but he doesn't disobey his own drawing style and his own knowledge of the craft. We're only a couple pages in and he's already like playing fun stuff with this cape. You know, like it's been fried. It looks like <laughs> ashes and pieces of it are just falling off at this point. But you look closely and it's a different depiction of the cape. Al Persimmons. <laughs> <laughs> following that format of the tv talking head screens it, except in this case we're, we're flipping channels it is but it's also very much in the kurtzman school like even having the almost ben oda like uh serif font like that i swear wally would drew that exact image in something that would make sense right like why wouldn't you slip in an homage panel of that sort yeah it's just his his parody style is so close to uh to like the ec vibe more of that great attention to lighting you see it consistently throughout this i wonder how he hooked up with alan moore if moore would have seen something like this like what that what you know what what would have crossed moore's desk where he was like yeah this guy's got what i need i feel like it would be something like this man and he and hitting all the same homeworks because like the stuff that he would do with alan moore would be the blot which is kind of parody-ish mm -hmm. and funny yeah that's like your ben oda lettering totally absolutely pretty inventive storytelling right like one his brain comes out of his out of his head and now we're seeing like the the ooze Excellent. for your panel borders yeah. which you know again not that far removed mcfarlane would do all kinds of creative panel totally. bordering so it's a pretty good uh, observation to add absolutely and then it made me realize like i feel like i don't even know what al simmons look like looks like because like all that you ever see is a silhouette of him getting his head exploded by a gun <laughs> right like, we know what Terry Fitzgerald looks like more like than we know what uh, Al Simmons looks like. There's a lot of built on this four-page grid, which is a piece that does not feel McFarlane-esque. No. You know, where are those tall, skinny panels, Hillary? That's what we needed in there if you're really going <laughs> to nail the uh, McFarlane style. You see what I mean, though? Like, none of those lines feel feel wrong. It, 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 all, it all flows as, as, you know, a piece of cloth. Yeah. I like whenever he does these little bits of feathering, like on a shadow, where it gives it a little bit more depth or variation. It's the train track Will Eisner sh shading. It's and nice. I, I, it's I love nice that. inking. Yeah. I love that stuff. Incorporate a bunch of that kind of... You even see it in some of the architecture on the building, some really nice inking flourishes. And I love this. McFar uh, Spawn is remembering that he used to draw comics, sitting on the top of the building doing his uh, comic book artist riff. And this, to me, is where Barta shines, like some of these cartoony faces. I also assume he must have been doing, like, mad or cracked work. I mean, I don't know how you could have this style and not have those guys, like, coming af after you for some work. Right. A lot of jokes about the, uh, the cape and how much of an albatross it is. So here in the rain, it just gets so heavy, it pulls them down. <laughs> Hey, 
heck of an ink slinger. I, it, it, I guess he's fully in order. It's not Doug Rice who inked him, right? Yeah, I don't know why Doug Rice's name is in the credits there. If he was maybe sharing studio, did some assistance with him, but he doesn't give him any any um, like it's not an art credit that's listed there. So right. I don't think he's doing too much. Just like a, just like consummate brush slinger. I really like this Spawn silhouette, or I mean, uh, profile. Yeah, like it feels it feels very satisfying. Something that uh, I didn't see McFarlane do, you know, like incorporate the nose. Usually it felt creepy whenever you'd see the nose totally. poking out of the mask. And, and the other thing that McFarlane was never really good at was imagining the shape of the figure underneath the cape. You know, that would be like a criticism that people would have like on a lot of his stuff. And in fact, I think uh, on his like latest, like, he made a Batman toy from, from year two and with a cape that can like snap off so that he shows you, look, see, here's the body and here's the cape. It, it, it all works. It all functions. But Barda can, he's imagining the, the underlying structure where that cape is sitting on top of, like you even see it here, like how it's draped over his arm. Uh, McFarlane would absolutely cheat that in massive ways to very cool graphical degrees, but it has yeah. nothing to do with reality or anything. Observation, I should say. I like this panel with all this stuff, and I wonder if this is another Wally Wood nod, like a Captain Action figure here. Yeah, or Super Duper Man. Why not? Yeah, either one. This is such a bizarre comic, by the way. Yeah, as a reading experience, it's kind of whatever, but the but the art is just sublime to look at. Yeah, it's very sharp. I, I wonder, like, what does a McFarlane think of this? Because it's got to be... On one hand, flattering, but also, like, weird. Yeah. He's deconstructing various McFarlane-isms, and uh, I think I prefer this violator to the McFarlane violator. I was going to ask you. There's some cool stuff, like, sometimes this mouth, especially, like, it comes, like, back in a weird way, really works for me. Yeah, yeah, you, on the record, is being pretty critical of the violator design. Yeah, I don't love the violator design. But I do like this one. Like some of the the mouth stuff, it just it feels like a shitty B movie monster. Right. Now this right here <laughs> is the greatest comic book joke I've ever seen. Like it's unbelievable, man. Cartoonist Kayfabe is brought to you by the comics that Ed Piscor and I make. Red Room trigger warnings. The second season of Red Room, all self-contained stories, issues one to four, now available in comic shops everywhere. Red Room, the anti-social network, the trade paperback collection of the first season of Red Room, now available in comic shops everywhere, minus 28 countries where it's banned in 10 comic shops, but you can still request it there. And coming in September, the collection, the trade paperback of Red Room Trigger Warnings will be in stores in September. You can pre-order that now at your local comic sh shop or online wherever you buy your books. Hulk Grand Design Monster and Hulk Grand Design Madness in comic shops everywhere. The 60-year history of the Incredible Hulk. I am writing, drawing, lettering, coloring the Grand Design treatment, retelling that 60-year history. And you can now pre-order the Hulk Grand Design Oversized Treasury Collection. Uh, about 40 extra pages in that. It'll be in stores before Christmas, but you can pre-order it now in your comic shops or in your bookstores wherever you're, you buy comics. And now back to our regular scheduled programming. Like, uh, uh, if only I hadn't caught my cape in the staple. Yeah. And it's positioned right at the fucking Brilliant. staple. Like, this is the kind of stuff that Kurtzman would kill for. Like, if Kurtzman saw that, he would be so mad that, that he didn't come up with that joke himself because of the great use of fourth wall stuff in Mad. You know, people grabbing the gutters of panel borders and, and shit. Like, but, like, I've never seen that. And it's so smart. It is, and the drawing's so good. Like, that cape is stretched so tight over the edge of the, the, the building right, chimney there. Right at the point of tension. It's perfect. It's, it's well done. Right at the point of tension. I, I mean, it's unbelievable to me. And you still get your joke in about uh, Del Keown's pit. Right. <laughs> and there's a weird... I don't know if you noticed this, but the perspective is all wonky on these buildings. Yeah. I really I, like that. Yeah, he's he's just... You know, he's eyeballing it. And it's it's a comic book thing. Like uh, in, like the cartoony thing where you, you could do that. You know, I Steve, think it's Steve 100% intentional. Steve Purcell can do that. But I'm on board. Because you even see like how it's just... You know, it's that expressionistic thing. We've had uh, King Kong going on in the background for pretty much throughout this book. Look, that looks like the Max window. It does. 
jokes. A couple in- inside or, jokes here. Or uh, Denny Colt from from uh, from Spirit. Spirit. Yeah, yeah, that's probably more accurate. I don't know when Max would have been out or why you'd be incorporating that. But I guess it's concurrent with Pitt. So if you're getting Pitt references, Max would be fair game. Polly Baggin fanboy hearts. <laughs> Jeez, so random. There's a good shot of your violator, this <laughs> this design version. I don't know why that works better for me. It has a it has more weight, I think, than yeah. the, uh, a lot of the McFarlane violator. That's another that pose of our guy running out of the the burning building. Totally feels like something out of a Mad Magazine, a Harvey Kurtzman. It's exaggerated anatomy yeah for sure like the joke is real good on the previous page uh spawn is using just his pinky uh-huh. to blast him with like a little a yes. little spurt and then like <laughs> you see what that little spurt does and also misses yeah. he talks about having trouble aiming which is ridiculous that's a joke that i'm surprised hasn't been used a lot more or figured out earlier a little american gothic nod hitting the broadside of uh barnes and then you see he he missed the broadside. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> uh, Keychain for for some of the chains on Spawn's costume. Just dumb, tiny toys. Little Randy Bowen nod, <laughs> right there. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. That's exactly what that is. <laughs> wow. See one of our uh, wizard episodes for <laughs> to, to be filled in on that. Wonder if he's doing his own lettering on these kinds of. It, it looks like uh, freaking Don Simpson. That's what I mean, like an artist doing some lettering. Very incorporated there. Also, if you're running into deadline issues, because we are getting kind of sparse in these pages, right. pass that one off to your letter. Like, this whole thing is, is completely... I didn't realize it, it's but just it's spawn, all Spawn. Yeah, it's just a Spawn parody, which which the uh, the bummer is like, I wish there were more, because I would love to see the young blood. Yes. I would love to see the Wildcats. This was one of my favorite pieces, is the end being made up of the uh, the cape. Fantastic. It's so good looking. Fantastic. Unbelievable. Great lettering. That's another one, like, I can't believe that hasn't been done to the point of, like, you know, being a common part of comics language. It's so, it looks so good. Uh, we, said, we saw that uh, McFarlane Silver Sable hair with the little <laughs> curly locks. <laughs> Well, Simonson's uh, Cyber Force Zero is going to be have, have to be on the channel at some point. Beautiful illustration. What is here. happening? Like, why is this in here? Yeah, that's a good question, man. Just need to fill fill out some some space, and I think that the joke is probably that Aldo is not in there. Yeah, I spent a little bit of time looking for him and didn't see him. It is a beautiful illustration, though. So it may just be, hey, if you get to do your own image book, put some put put some of your uh, your own shine in there. Yeah, I mean, it really looks like because it is so out of place, right? Like. This is something that you submit to Highlights Magazine for work or something, or Mad Magazine for work. You know, it feels like a like he's really going for it as a portfolio piece. But also, the Where's Waldo books were huge right at this moment also. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff on this page that's worth looking at. I see little bits of, like, uh, Wrightson, 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 Wrightson in some absolutely. of this stuff, yeah, totally. which is kind of neat. Yeah, it's, it's cool to look at. You see some influences on there, but man, all those little figures. Very cool. Yeah, I would love to see a, the original of that. <laughs> There's your, your solution, by the way, for the Where's Auto. How good is this Jay Lee ad? I was so on board for this stuff at the time. This is around that Youngblood Strike File Jay Lee time mm-hmm. period. And uh, man, I was just loving what he was doing you can see like little pen lines and scratchy stuff and just when we haven't crazy on the pages we haven't looked at those issues yet on the channel but uh but we absolutely should and one of the things to compare with young blood strike file really is a coloring department because i think that might have been a joe chiodo uh set of color on the trilogy of uh the 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 wild catch uh-huh. trilogy thing and uh that color is so modeled uh, compared to the strike file, and you could draw your own conclusions. It's been a while since I've seen, so I, I can't 
speak on like which I like better. But it's worth noting because it lets you. I'll see, speak on it. Yeah. That young blood strike file coloring to me is striking. Yeah. It's real weird. You know, mm-hmm. it's a lot of like the brightest saturated. You're getting full magentas and things like that. Yeah. I really like it. Um, but the art's so different between the two stories too. Like, there's a real. There, there are like a bunch of panels on the pages in yeah. the Wildcats trilogy and stuff. Yeah, so. the color and strike file is like this. Like, but like the interiors of the trilogy is not colored like this. Yeah, we're going to have to look at this at some point. Hey, look at the next issue. It's Savage Dragoon plus Dorkier Image. Dorkier Image ended up being published. I don't think it's um, what Barda was going to do, but there is a Dorkier Image out there. I think it might be Bill Mouse and, I don't know, Eternity or one of these companies that was publishing all those parodies. And they have, like, multiple covers, you know, like cover variant covers and stuff for it. So... Probably not one that we'll look at on the channel, <laughs> but it is something I find in those dollar bins from time to time. This Tiger Files that that never came out, did it? I don't think it did, and I like the way it looks. And there, and you know, that's Doug Rice uh, doing some art there. So, yeah, I, I think that looks really cool, and that gives you an idea, Max Number Four, of where they're at time wise. Showing off his activated glutes after yoga with Adrian. Yeah, I think Mark Silvestri would do this later with Wolverine and a cowboy hat. Just prancing, man, shaking him tail feathers. <laughs> Super fun, man. Yeah, perfect to have a pit on there, too, because I think pit was advertised in the early spawn. So kind of uh, even the ad makes sense. The Canucks. Good to go. I am. Okay, favorites, like, follow, subscribe to the YouTube channel with the bell. We'll notify you when new vids are available. Jimmy, what's out there? Hulk Grand Design, the Treasury Oversized Collection, is available for pre-order now wherever you pre-order your books and comics online at your comic shop at your library wherever the case may be you want to order that it's the best book i've ever designed certainly the most time i've ever put in the design of a book and uh, i can't wait for everybody to see it it'll be out in time for christmas this year so pre-order it now uh, give it to your your favorite hulk fans keep it for yourself and uh, join me on patreon.com slash jim rug where you can see more of my comics and art red room trigger warnings trade paperback is hitting the stands in september Murder on the Dark Web for Fun and Profit is the name of the game, and it is collecting the four issues of Red Room that came out this year, 2022. Plus, there's going to be about 75 pages of extra material, lots of extra art that I drew to sort of create the the, the book package, uh, background material, commentaries, and the first draft of uh, the first Red Room comic is continuing serialization in that trade paperback. Hit up my link tree in the description below this video to order and pre-order these uh, Red Room comics. And if you hit up my Patreon today, I'm serializing uh, Red Room comics that have not yet hit uh, print. Uh, and it's going to be some time before they do hit print. Probably next uh, spring or, or summer of uh, 2023 is when they're going to hit paper. So check them out right now. Uh, more than close to 300 pages worth of stuff up there. All the existing Red Room material and new strips every Tuesday. What else do we have, Jim? Subscribe to the Cartoonist Kayfabe e-newsletter at the links below this video. You can also find Cartoonist Kayfabe t-shirts and merchandise at the links below this video. It's another great way to support the Cartoonist Kayfabe channel. Given those marching orders, we'll be on our way, Jim. Read more comics.